You talking to me? It's gonna be legendary. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. You're listening to Natalie Lipka and Wayne Frazier on Hollywood Close-Up. Hollywood Close Up. I'm Natalie Lipka. And I'm Wayne Frazier, and we are two actors talking our way to the top. Do you feel like you are wasting time on social media every day and seeing zero results? Social media can be a powerful tool for your acting career if you have a plan. That plan is the 21 day social rock star challenge. The challenge gives you the step by step strategies you need to always know what to post, to grow your following, and make real connections online so you can book more work, all in less than 10 minutes a day. Start your social media challenge today and go to socialrockstarchallenge.com. What have you got to lose? Absolutely. Welcome to the show. Yes, please Everybody. make sure to check us out at natalieandwayne.com. We love you if you're watching on Facebook right now. We love you anyway. Hello. But we're really excited you're here with us. And follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Natalie and Wayne. Yeah, and once again, we uh, are graced with the uh, music from uh, Aaliyah Mulden. And uh, you can check her music out at aaliyahmulden.com. Good stuff from her. And we have very special guests coming up on the show later. Oh, yeah. Zena will be with us. Yes. I think there's nothing this woman can't do. So I'm excited to talk to her. I can't wait to talk to her about some of the books she's been writing. That's mm-hmm. the big thing. Some uh, just amazing, you know, books to help you with your, your own confidence and, and eating and diets. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's going to be great. Exciting. Exciting. And Rena Marie is yes. here. Yes. Hello. Hello. Oh, I was like, is that a new sound effect? <laughs> No, it's just Wayne trying to whistle. <laughs> whistle while you work. You gotta love it. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, um, how, how's everything with you, Rena Marie? Everything is good. Well, fantastic. Yeah, things are good. Oh, that's wonderful. Happy, uh, happy week. Oh, thank you. Happy week. Yeah. Um, guys, we got we lost uh, 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 just an icon. Oh, An amazing and this playwright, is, actor. Yeah. Just this is too much for quick and quirky because he's uh, such an impact on the on the on the field. And yeah. of course, we're talking about Sam Shepard. Yeah. yeah, so crazy. I I I couldn't believe that when I read that. I was like, he's he's not that old. No, like, seventy three. Yeah. No, young. young and he man. suffered from ALS. Yeah. And, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't think many people did. Uh, I don't think they did. That. He must have kept that kind of quiet because I did not know. Yeah. That. Yeah, and he was working. Up until, you know, just this year, he had a book come out at the beginning of the year. He was on Bloodline. Mm, Yeah, the TV show Bloodline. The TV show, yeah. Yeah, just working right up to it. That's crazy. And in in uh, a lot of people didn't, I guess, re- it was shocking to Hollywood because uh, I was you telling you You were saying about line, Matthew, Matthew McConaughey. Mc- yeah. I wait, can't what, believe it. Wait, what? what, well, what? well, Matthew McConaughey was um, on uh, red carpet for uh, Dark Tower. Uh, the uh, I guess it was Thursday because this happened last Thursday uh, that it was... Um, that he passed, I guess, on Thursday, and then they announced it officially, oh. I guess. I don't know when the premiere was. I have to look that up. But um, Unless it was last night, on Monday y- night. Yeah, because Matthew McConaughey did not know, and they and they brought it up to him during the broadcast. And he was like, I, he goes, I don't even, I, what what he die of? You know what I mean? So I don't even know if, like, the oh, public wow. knew yeah. exactly what happened with him. And actually, I was uh, looking at people.com. They had posted... Uh, about Sam Shepard and talking about him. And then we're sharing facts about ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease mm-hmm. and just okay. kind of sharing that how the symptoms are sudden <clears throat> and it's not necessarily hereditary and just kind of give more information because you remember back when they we were all doing the ice bucket challenge. Yeah. Right, right. And that did raise a lot of money for ALS and a lot of awareness. Yeah. Um, but it's a disease that I think, although we know more about, or are more aware of it, maybe still don't quite know as much about it as we can. Yeah, and that's what we always, you know, mention that cancer research and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society uh, to um, absolutely 
donate and, and do whatever you can uh, to end this. Uh, this is a horrible. Um, very young man, uh, Academy Award nomination mm-hmm. for 1983's The Right Stuff. Um, he played uh, Chuck Yeager. Yeah. And uh, the, directed by Philip Kaufman. Um, apparently, I read a story that... that uh, Chuck Yeager and Sam had met the first time they met. They didn't really care for each other. Really? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it makes you wonder. Oh. Did they meet before he did the role or after? No, I, was, I guess it was preparing for the role. Okay. And and I guess they met and uh, they didn't really care if they were on the opposite ends of most of their mm. uh, politics and everything else. Uh, but then again, you know, but then eventually they got to know each other and, and uh, enjoyed each other's company or what have you. But uh, it's it's interesting. That's very to, interesting. To know that, you know, when you're playing... Uh, a, a role of somebody in real life and you meet that person in real life, that's got to be a, a strange. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and the other thing I found interesting, and there were a lot of videos, I know the Hollywood Reporter put one out, and a lot of them started with Sam Shepard saying, I don't remember when I started writing plays. I, it, I just started Oh, like, wow. It, really? I'm, I'm misquoting that. That's not the perfect way he said it, but right. it's like he didn't, he doesn't know when. Oh, that's amazing. It just it just wow. happened. And I mean, his plays just were all about family dramas and especially like middle America and spoke to so many different people. Yeah. yeah. That thank goodness he just started writing. Yeah. You know, because he's incredible. Over 50 plays, a Pulitzer Prize for the play uh, Buried Child. Right. Wow. Um, yeah. He was such a, a phenomenal. He was actually one of my one of my favorite, one of my m- more favorite actors. Yeah. Um, really? Ma- male actors, Aww. yeah. I really liked him. And, and you know, he was in a relationship with Jessica Lang for years. Like, for 30, like 30 years. 30 years. They have yeah. two children together. Yeah. And she is one of my favorite mm. female actresses. Yeah. And Phenomenal. So, it's really heartbreaking. He was really talented. Yeah. What a loss. Yeah. Well, rest in peace. Um, uh, and to, our hearts and thoughts go out yeah. to, the, to his family and friends and... Yeah. Hollywood and the entertainment industry is definitely saddened. I yeah. think we yes. can we can say, yeah. So Aww, keep losing these great. Actors. I know, no. it just keeps rolling. Um, but that's what we got to do right now. So um, we'll keep rolling. Uh, let's do a little social media. How little about that? Social media Bring it up a little bit. Give me some that? music. You got it. <laughs> All right. Well, Facebook shuts down robots after they invent their own language. Did you guys hear about no. this? What? This came out this morning. It's from the Telegraph. Research at Facebook Artificial Intelligence, researchers at Facebook Artificial Intelligence Research built a chatbot earlier this year that was meant to learn how to negotiate by mimicking human trading and bartering. And basically, the social network prepared two of the programs, nicknamed Alice and Bob, to trade against each other, and they started their own form of communication. What? And it was something that we, you know, as humans, do not understand that language. And they said it's important to remember there aren't bilingual speakers of AI and human languages, so they had to shut it down. Oh, whoa. whoa. Yeah. This so, is James Cameron yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, This wait. is not a movie. This is... This is real. This, this is actually happening. happened. Yes. So, oh, my gosh. Crazy. Wow. And Come on. Get to the chopper. <laughs> right. The cyborgs. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Come on. And a little more fun. I was reading in The Hollywood Reporter, Apple Music unveils new teaser for Carpool Karaoke series. The show is set to premiere August 8th. And, of course, this is based on the Late Late Show segment with James Corden. But they're actually going to have a lot of different celebrities. In oh, so it's not just going to be him doing it. Yeah. And the, the it's really funny. I was watching the trailer, and it's got some great people on it. I'm, I'm really excited for that. And also, you need to check this out. Uh, past guest Katie Rose Donahue shared this with me on Instagram about Jimmy Fowley's show. It's called So Long to Boulder City. It's the comedian's take on Emma Stone's one-woman show from La La Land. You know how Emma Stone does this show? Well, he basically has created this one-woman show called So Long Boulder City as like Emma Stone. And it's amazing. You got to check it out on Jimmy's Instagram. He's got pics from the show and even even Emma Stone's mom came to the show wow, that's <laughs> and nice. it's selling out they're talking about it everywhere and it looks like it was just extended and it's already sold out so it's on wow. actually on a stage on a stage in hollywood i think it's the celebration theater you'll have to check out his instagram he has all the information interesting valley on instagram but it the, what a brilliant idea yeah that's interesting so and that is my little social media moment all right fantastic 
Well, now it's time for some not so quick and quirky news with Wayne Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> Dunkirk has won the battle again, guys, this week to earn the top spot in the dom- at the domestic box office. According to boxofficemojo.com, it has earned over 103 million dollars so far. Ooh. Um, wow. okay. Yep, yeah, yeah. 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 Great. <laughs> 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 I'm going to say about that. Hundred and three million dollars. Oh my goodness. <laughs> keep keep going, guys. A lot keep of going. battle money right there. Hundred and three. <laughs> According to Deadline.com, the Screen Actors Guild and After a Foundation uh, will honor Netflix Chief Content Officer Ted Sarandis, director Catherine uh, Catherine Bigelow, and Judd Apatow with the Patron of the Artist Award. Oh, interesting. Mm. The award uh, honors artists who create opportunities for actors that have made a positive impact on the profession and performing arts. Mm. Congratulations to them. Mm. And finally, from 2008 to 2017, Bobby Mooneyham uh, has been a... Moynihan. 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 Love him. You cannot talk today. Love him. Uh, He's been a regular on SNL. No, don't tell me. And he is finally... No! This is his... No, wait, I didn't know this. I didn't know this because when he... I'm totally jumping in on your thing. It's okay. But when he did Drunk Uncle in the finale, I remember watching it and being like, this is the last time he's going to be doing Drunk Uncle. That's right. Well, well, that could have been he was giving up the character, though. You never know. No, because he was leaving. He was leaving. I I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's definitely officially he's not returning. So it's... Yeah. It is official Uh, and he is uh, leaving the show and he's got a TV series. Oh, me, that's exciting. Me, good myself, and I, I believe it's called. Really? Um, oh, good. Yeah, so he's going to still be on TV, but uh, man, he was so funny for all he those was, years. Uh, he was so versatile. One of those classics. He was he's so versatile. So good. Yeah. So, so classic. Good. So uh, cheers to him, to Bobby, and cheers the rest of them. And um, that's all I got on Quick and Quirky. I'm Wayne Frazier. And I'm Natalie Lipko. We'll be right back on Hollywood Close Up with filmmaker and musician Izina. Can you only imagine, I can only imagine What it would be like when I walk by your side I can only imagine what my eyes would see when your face For me, I can only imagine. I can only imagine to be surrounded by. Hello and welcome back to Hollywood Close Up. I'm Wayne Frazier. And I'm Natalie Lipka. And uh, boy, do we have a special uh, episode here. Um, our special guest today is a former Miss uh, Miss Black USA pageant winner. Uh, she's a musician, an author, a filmmaker. The list goes on and on and on. Her books uh, inspire, enlighten, and make you hungry for more. <laughs> that's for the cookbook. That's my own little reference there. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Azina's in the house here. 
Yeah, welcome My goodness. to the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Well, thank Thanks you so much. for being here. Yeah. I, that's one of my favorite colors. That dress is so beautiful. Thank you. You know, when I saw you, I'm like, oh my gosh, we're matching. We're looking so hot <laughs> together today. I yes. love it. <laughs> and what? we didn't even call ahead. No. That's how in sync we are. Right? Now we exactly. know. Exactly. Now we know. What is that color? Is that like a teal? It's like a teal. I'd say it's a teal blue. I did Very it. good, Wayne. You did. That's awesome. <laughs> I am I so impressed. That's the show. Thanks for coming out. Right, right. Appreciate it. Oh Wayne teal. gets his colors correct. <laughs> I love it. Usually men are colorblind, and you're like, that's no, teal. That's I'm like, teal. Oh, right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, you look absolutely stunning in Thank that. You. Yeah, you Thank look you. great. Really brings out uh, the, the smile and everything else. What? Uh, how are you? What's going on with you? Oh, my gosh. What's not going on with me? I'm good. Uh, working on lots of projects as usual. Um, right now I'm shooting a movie and uh, just finished wrapping on a new a new book, a new yeah. album, and there's always lots going on. So. <laughs> right. And how do you I, – I ask this about a lot of our guests, yeah. but you just threw out three – huge things. How do you manage your time and set your priorities? You know, it's really great now that we have all this amazing technology. Thank you, Google. <laughs> you know, without that Google calendar, you yeah. know, telling me, you know, what's happening, you know, that it helps a lot. And also having an amazing team around me. Mm -hmm. I have an incredible uh, assistant here, Colette, which is with me today. I have an amazing... Hello, Colette. <laughs> <laughs> she's off camera. <laughs> she's keeping me together. Um, you know, she's just an incredible organized person, and I tend to be quite organized myself, and uh, I don't sleep much. <laughs> right. But you look so awake. Thank you. So <laughs> Since four, can you tell? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> what is, okay, so then what is a, a a regular day for you? Then you get up at four and, and you go shoot a movie and then write a book. What do you? I, it, I it depends on how the does day. It work? Um, most days, <laughs> all I'm, in one day. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> most days, I'm up at four o'clock and I do uh, my sadhana practice, which consists mm -hmm. of uh, med meditating and chanting, and then I do a yoga set for about ninety minutes. And then oh, after wow. that, I get started with my day, depending on what's on the calendar, either recording or writing or, you know, if I'm on set shooting something, then I'm headed to wherever I need to be to shoot. Right, right, but, absolutely. But yeah, the day starts early. <laughs> so you, you're based out here in L.A. then. So I you am. live out here, and but you're actually from uh, Michigan, correct? You got it. You're from yeah. yeah. Flint, Michigan. And how Born in Flint, Michigan. How yeah. long have you been here? I've been here since 2007. 2007, okay. Yeah. Before that, I was in New York City, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you like and it You like it a little bit better here than uh, than the East Coast, or how do you, how do you adjust? Do you like I it? love the weather. Mm -hmm. I love it, love it. Nothing beats California mm -hmm. weather and being mm -hmm. able to go to the beach. You know, mm -hmm. I came here when I was 16, and I was like, I'm home. And my mom's like, um, <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> right? No. It took some time, but, you know, I made my way back. Right. Yeah, and I think, well, Wayne and I are both from the East Coast originally. Right. So e growing up in Michigan, it's not like you could just get to the beach exactly. easily. You right. went to lakes and things like that, right? As Absolutely. To the Every ocean. weekend on the lake. Yeah. It was very different. <laughs> and um, because you're from Flint, Michigan, and we all know what has been going on there, and you're helping to raise money for them. Is that correct? I for the water I... crisis, yes. You know, I was born in the city of Flint uh, at Hurley Medical Center. And, uh, you know, right now there is a shortage of water. Mm -hmm. um, I still have family members that live there and they're still taking baths with bottles of water. You know, wow. so and you think, you know, here in the United States, you know, we're not talking about India or, you know, anywhere else in the world. We're talking about here in the United States. There is sure. a town you know, of 200,000 people that do not have clean water. Yeah. And so I've really just been trying to raise awareness about it and, and hopefully to, you know, have some change in the government there where we can, you know, do something about it. Because what's happened is, you know, OSHA has gotten involved, but mm -hmm. they can only go so far. And what needs to happen is they need to rewire the, the piping system for the entire town. And that's very expensive. Yeah. You know, that's like a $10 billion dollar. Uh, price wow. tag, you know, oh to make God. that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because, you know, right now Flint is on hard times, GM has left, you know, all the factories right. have left. So there's not a whole lot of jobs there. So, you know, there's just no one's really seeing the benefit of investing in a small town to refurbish oh, their water system. Which upsets so, me so much. That's yeah, a shame. That's yeah, a shame. it's just really sad. And so people who can are moving away and those who can't are stuck taking baths and cooking with bottled water. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. so how can, if you know, you're helping with this, how can um, our listeners, if they're interested in helping, 
What's the best way to do that right now? You know, the best way is to write letters to, you know, your congressmen, your legislators, and let them know that you're not okay with there being a, a town in the United States that where there's no water. Because there's a lot of companies who have agreed to put up money and like, you know, myself, I'm trying to raise funds, but we can't do anything until the government says, okay, we want it's to time. do it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So no matter how much money we raise in everyone's home that you go to in the city of Flint, they have six, you know, six foot tall stacks of water. You know, when you go to the store or Costco wow. and you get those big crates yeah. of water, yeah. you know, huh. they've been given water free. Lots of the water companies have donated and I'm so grateful for that. But what we need is for the legislatures to say, okay, this is a priority yeah. Yeah. to make sure yeah. that these people have clean water and that they don't have to go through. Yeah. The- I mean, my God, how, how long is how long are they supposed to, and how long are these companies going to qu- keep donating? Exactly. That's the, that's the question there. Yes, exactly. And if they feel like if they feel like there's no, uh, uh, you know, jobs in that to, to go, you know, why invest? That's a tough one. It's wow. very tough. It's very tough. And which is why I just want people to get involved in any way that you can. But the most important way that you can get involved is really to send letters, make yeah. phone calls, because without them seeing that it's important to people, not only in the city, but the people around the world, then they will get start doing something. No. Because right now they just don't see the return on investment. And the way that and the way that social media and and, and media is today, uh, everybody it seems to it's already yesterday's news. And yes, it's, and it's not gone. The problem's right. still there. Exactly, and, and even more so. Absolutely, you know? you know, it's becoming more dire. You know, every time I go back to visit, I'm just kind of shocked um, because more of the town is shutting down because the people, like I said, people who can move away, and those who can't are, you know, the people who have less resources, financial. Right resources to do so and those are the people who need it the most yeah. well with with that then um you you write a lot of inspiring books and you have one grow your star is this something this everything happens in a domino effect that feels like sometimes is this something that from from that you go okay let me at least give some hope in, in a different way, in a positive way. Is that a, why you do these more least these inspiring books? For Absolutely. People? You know, I've traveled around the world many times and I see lots of things. But when you see it in the town where you were born, it's really devastating more sure. so, you yeah. know, because I know those streets. Um, and so I've always wanted to inspire people to help them to grow and to do more and to know that, you know, just because you're in a small town doesn't mean that you can't become an author or an athlete or a musician or whatever it is you want to do in life. You know, you can do anything. And sometimes you just need to have someone out there telling you that you can do it. Mm -hmm. And so I keep telling them over and over and over again in the books and the music and so on and so forth, just trying to inspire hope for people. Because as a little girl, you know, growing up in a small town, I had no idea the capacity Mm -hmm. that I would be able to affect change. And so I want every little girl to know that she has the ability, and every little boy to know that they have the ability to change the world. Yeah. Right. You know, and so I keep writing and hoping that, <laughs> you know, because you don't know, you know, okay, if I say it this way, will you get it? Or will I say it this way? Or maybe if I sing it to you in a song, you know. <laughs> Make a film about it. Make a it. film about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, how can I show you that, you know, you have so much opportunity and there are people out there who want to help you to make your dreams a reality. Yeah. So. Uh, and that's the thing about you is that you're... You're, you're leading by example, but not just one example, whereas you're, you are coming at it from all those different places of being a musician and an author and a humanitarian and a director. And it's just it's incredible. You're like, well, well she can do all this. <laughs> yeah. I can do this. You absolutely. know, I can do one of those things. Right. Absolutely. You or know? all, you know, exactly. and, and I meet these these young kids and I'm so inspired by them because they're so talented You know, and thank goodness for all the resources we have now with computers and technology and what have you. They can do so much. And I'm always inspired when I see these young kids that are not only creating businesses, but they're writing books. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they're just doing such amazing things. And I'm just like, yes, keep going. And how can I help you? You know, what can I do? You know, to help foster that and more young people. Right. Right. And that's that's tough right now. That's amazing. Absolutely. What, um... You also do uh, like a diet book. Let's <laughs> yes, talk about let's talk about that. And, and <laughs> let's talk about getting healthy. Yes, let's talk about healthy. yeah. What um divine living cuisine? What yes. what is what is divine living cuisine? That's the name of one of her books. Sounds though. really good. Yeah, you know, divine living cuisine is a book that really is focused on living using whole foods, organic foods. 
Um, I grew up in a town where, you know, it wasn't unusual when I was a kid for parents to give you a Twinkie or a cupcake or, mm -hmm. you know, what were those little things when I was growing up? The little yes. Debbies. <laughs> the little little Debbies. Debbies. Yes. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> yes. That was in, that's in your lunch every day. Right. Yeah. right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. The oat, <laughs> oatmeal cream pie. Right. The little Debbie. Right. Oh, right. the fave and the yodels or whatever. The, the, yeah. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Yeah. Easily just throw that in there instead of an apple, right? Exactly. And, you know, as I got more into yoga and health and so forth, I was like, wow, I really need to help people to understand a little bit more about what it means to eat healthy. And mm -hmm. it doesn't mean eating salads every day. You know, there's lots of yummy things you can eat that are healthy for it's you. It's not easy. It's not easy mm -hmm. at no. first when you right. first start until it becomes a lifestyle. But right. once you make it fun, you know, then the sky's the limit. It's like kind of, and, and, and you kind of got to do it a little bit at a time. Exactly. You know, you exactly. can't just like all of a sudden you, you, you give up the, the Twinkies, but you, you know, you still might be eating a couple French fries. Right. You, you got to do a little bit. Oh, of, my weakness. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. French, fries. French fries. We know oh, that my, now. I know. <laughs> Watch out. And then I'm like, oh, well, I'll eat sweet potato fries because at least they're sweet potatoes. Right. That's right. better for me, right? That's a little better, right? Exactly. It makes um, any difference. But even the, the name of that book, that's why I was like, that sounds good, is because it's divine living yes. cuisine. That just yes. makes you want mm. to do that. Yes, because we're all divine beings, you know, and it's like you can't help anyone until you help yourself. And so the first thing is to help yourself by giving yourself the best food you possibly can. Yeah. And once you have the best fuel going in, then you can produce so much more in the world, you know, yeah. because you have good fuel. You're not having the, the up and down of the sugar, you know, or the, the coffee or whatever. You know, we have all these things that we eat regularly that, you know, cause all these spikes. Right. And these yeah. spikes in energy, you know, they kind of shortchange us throughout, throughout the day. So, you know, Divine Living Cuisine, I was just like, okay, here it is. You know, first start with maybe cutting out red meat, then cut out poultry, and then cut out fish, and mm. then maybe try to be vegetarian and then maybe try to be vegan you know but figure out where you feel good right. where you feel divine where you feel your most positive self because it's not for vegetarianism is not for everyone mm -hmm. right yeah. you know you may want to be a pescatarian you may want i don't know but the thing is to figure out how you operate the most optimally right mm -hmm. you know without necessarily overdoing the coffee every exactly. day exactly in the sugar 10, yeah. 10 espressos to get through the day <laughs> what you know oh, the Wayne so, secret yeah <laughs> that's how he does the show <laughs> 20 espressos and then like oh, i've already done five shows this week right. you know it's like well it's in crazy. your mind in my head uh, yeah but why, <laughs> i've already done all my cleaning for next week it's just fantastic it. i haven't even been there yet uh, and your holiday shopping right. you know? <laughs> for 2020 right yeah. right <laughs> 2020 that was not yeah. was that 2020 yeah. 2020 2020 i like it i like um, it but what what do you think it is that makes our body crave those fatty foods? Well, I just feel like all the hormones and things that are in our food are very addictive. Yeah. And so, you know, you have the, uh, okay, I'm just going to admit, French fries are my addiction, just so you know. If you know me, you know that I love French so fries. So you have to look in the camera and you have to say, French fries are my <laughs> Okay. I'm addicted to fries. So it was like, you know, figuring out how to how to get over that addiction because I'd have the fries and then I wouldn't have them for a while. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden I'd be driving down the street and it's like, oh, I want French fries. But, you know, it's the addiction. It's the oils. You know, once you cook those oils, they become a little bit rancid. And, you know, that works in your system and it it triggers this um this addiction, I, I, I'll just call it an addiction yeah. gene. No. Okay. You know, and then you want it over and over again. And right. the same with fatty foods, the same with, with sugar. And then also it's social. It's yeah. social. Right. Let's get, get together for well, brunch. Well, Let's get together for dessert. Happy yeah, hour. All, happy all, hour, right? Yeah, happy we all know hour these. meals are so good They're for so five good. bucks. You Absolutely. Know? This is the addiction right now. Yeah. And then you get the, you know, the, the phone. You know, <laughs> you got the addiction of the phone and, the, and that and everything you look at. And, and now that since the, the government has changed that policy on any time you look something, you were talking about Google earlier. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. look up Google and you go, oh, I happen to be looking up French fries for a roll. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> they get me every and time. You get, <laughs> and every right? time you see it on your on your uh, you know your your, your phone, the, the, you're getting that too. Yeah, right. Yes. So you're getting those advertisements. So it's it's constantly <laughs> in your it's face. Constantly. It's tough. It is tough. It's definitely yeah. tough. It requires a lot of brain power. And believe me, <laughs> when I'm right, <laughs> I have this favorite place that I love fries from. And every time I drive by, I'm like, nope, not going. You know, you have going. to admit. Right? You have to admit which place it is now. <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to. But I, we'll talk. You got to tell me after. Yeah. yeah, I'll tell you off camera. <laughs> off camera. Yeah. But you know, I wonder if ours are the same. That's why I'm curious. And it's so interesting because every time I drive by, if my husband's in the car, he's like, so? And I'm like, no. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you even need to say so? Right, Can right. we just pretend it's exactly, not happening? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, all of our food, it, it all has addictive quality because of those memories. You know, we also attach memories to our food. Yeah. You know, every holiday. Smell. You know, the smell, you know, or every time in Cinco de Mayo, you're like, whoo, you know, I'm going to have me some tacos and, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> or, every, or, or just every Tuesday, you're going right? to have tacos. Taco Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Absolutely. That's Absolutely. A, you know. So it becomes yeah. your brain, you know, it's not really the food. It's like the memories. It's like, oh, I had such a good time on Cinco de Mayo, you know. Yeah. Oh, I want to relive those those yeah. memories and feel those feelings, yeah. Yeah. you know. It's like, it's, like, it's like the days of just like, you know, wandering in a park and just eating a Big Mac. <laughs> you know, just the dreams, just hanging out. Oh, my just, goodness. <laughs> yes. Just throwing that in. Oh. Uh, if we could just have that memory music as right, I stare off into movie. space with a Big right, Mac. Right, right. Oh. <laughs> and the birds are chirping. Right, the birds are chirping. <laughs> Everything's great. And I'm sure you can remember the first time you had that Big Mac and how oh. you felt. And... Oh, yeah, like garbage if you uh, they... <laughs> We would like, go to McDonald's like an as a hour kid, later, and you get you get that toy and <laughs> the, the Happy, Happy Meal. Meal. Yes, yep. you yep. want to collect them all exactly. Like. And so you know that whole thought process of oh, McDonald's equals happiness because I got this yeah. this Happy Meal yeah. and I got this toy. Yeah, so it's awesome. but I think it, I think the thing is 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 you get all that and, and it, the quickness of it and everything. Not to down McDonald's, of course not. No, we no, support no, no. everybody no, no, no. out there. Absolutely, so, absolutely. But um, I, it's it's you're getting the, the the fix from the soda. You're getting yes. the fix from the, the sugar and the beef and yep. the fries and then mm. the and the flour. We need to stop. And, <laughs> and just like let's go get fries. <laughs> and then no more than like an hour later, you get you crash from it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and then so, you need something else. So with your book, uh, Divine Living Cuisine, you kind of will help us figure out what will help us not to crash and how to even that out, right? Absolutely. No matter what you decide, I'm, your, your I'm getting this book. Yeah. Is, yeah, I got to get this. book. Yeah, time goes by so fast. So I apologize. Oh we got to go yeah. already. But how awesome. do we get the book? Go to ezina.com, E-Z-I-N-A dot com. You can find books, music, and film and what I'm up to these days. Everything about you. Music. Uh, we need, there's so much we needed to so get. So much. In. Just, you know, we got talking about food. That's how it is. Yes. Um, what else you. is get, Yeah, what else is going on real quick? We, we, what can we look forward to uh, You can look forward to, Immediately, you can look forward to my new book called Glambitious. It's Ooh. Success Tips for Women. So that will be coming out in the Damn. next month. Uh, and it's just basically how to, you know, get your side hustle happening in today's age. Oh, so. I love it. I Perfect. Love it. I'm, I'm looking love forward to it. Too. We yeah. can find that in Amazon. And Amazon.com. You can go All through our website, too. Amazon.com. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. So. Well, thank you oh, so thank you much for having me. It's so, so wonderful. fun. Aww. Thank you so much. Please I really come back and visit. Yes. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> yes. And thank you to the network studios, yes, all of you. our listeners out there. and um, Yep. And uh, Marina Marie. And, oh, Rena Marie. Yeah, of course. And, <laughs> of and course. Ali, Aliyah Molden, her music. Yeah, check her oh, out gosh. at aliyahmolden.com. And beautiful. Please remember, cancer has affected so many of our lives, and you can help by donating to cancerresearch.org and the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, LLS.org. Let's end this disease once and for all. Please. And uh, catch up on all episodes past and present at natalieandwayne.com. Check us out on our Twitter. And uh, until the next week, uh, I'm Wayne Frazier. Yeah, I hope you're Wayne Frazier <laughs> next week, so. too. <laughs> Me, too. I've already done everything because I'm on a sugar buzz. Right. But, uh... <laughs> and I'm Natalie Lipka. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Hollywood Close-Up with Wayne Frazier and Natalie Lipka. Be sure to visit natalieandwayne.com for past episodes as well as information on future ones. Also, be sure to rate and comment about the show in iTunes. Until next time, bye-bye. That ripples through your clothes It's closer than your shadow I'm jealous of